right, and welcome to this edition of my Tesla Timeout series. Now, today I'm doing something a little bit different. Um, you know, there's so much hype and so much positivity about the new Model 3 Highland that's coming out that's already starting to see deliveries in Europe and Asia. It'll come to North America eventually, but I've already got a lot of people ask me, hey, are you going to go run out and are you going to sell your Model 3 and get a Project Highland, a new Model 3? And I'm thinking, no, why should I? Because I've done a lot of modifications and enhancements to this vehicle that pretty well puts it close to what the Project Highland ha is and what it's coming with. Now, it's not exact. There's some things that, that of course, the new Model 3 uh, Highland will have that my car doesn't, but I've done a lot to make it close. And I wanted to throw this quick video together just to explain what I've done and, and why I've done it, and basically. Now, I want to first start out by saying that the Project Highland is the Model 3 that really should have come when the Model 3 was released back in 2017. Now, just remember, folks, that it most likely will not come out at the same price points that we see today for the standard rear-wheel uh, drive Model 3 and for the all-wheel and performance Model 3. From the numbers that I'm seeing in Europe uh, overseas, it's about a 5 to 10% price increase over the existing models that are there. So this particular model that I have is the long range. It still currently sells today for $64,990 or so in Canada before freight PDI, all that kind of stuff. So 65 k which is what it was when I bought it in 2020. So for $65,000, I don't believe the Project Highland dual motor or long range is going to come in at that price, but we don't know yet, so we'll have to wait and see. So taking that into an account, then I would at least need to spend $65,000 to $70,000, let's say, to get into the Model 3 if I wanted to switch vehicles. So let me tell you what I've done to my vehicle so that if you don't want to, run out and buy a Project uh, Highland, the new Model 3, which I'm not going to do because I absolutely love my Model 3 the way it is today, but I have done some modifications. So let me explain what I've done and show you why it's almost a Model 3 Highland. Film. So first major modification that I did to this vehicle is the suspension. Now we all know that one of the key changes to the new Model 3 Project Highland is a complete revamp of the suspension. New uh, style upper control arms, which has always been a bit of a bane in Tesla's existence for the Model 3 and Y, but a completely new and designed su suspension system that's, from what I see in all reports, is providing a much smoother, quieter and comfortable ride, comfort being the key here, but still maintaining a good degree of handling characteristics for everyday driving and for some performance applications. But for what, for, for what I experienced and for, for many people that I talked to, they do say that the current ride is stiff. Now, even though the Model 3 and Model Ys have progressed over time to this more comfortable suspension, as Tesla calls it, it's still relatively stiff compared to the other competition on the market. So what I did is I changed out my suspension system to a mountain pass performance comfort kit suspension for the Model 3. They offer these suspension kits for both the Model 3 and the Model Y, and it's a complete shock and spring change out. So I'm not messing around with other components within the suspension system and the linkages and knuckles and things like that. It's strictly just changing out the shock absorbers and checking, uh, which in the front are a strut combination and on the rear changing out the, the shock absorber and the rear spring. Everything that I'm talking about on this video that I've done, I'm going to have links into the show notes to, to refer back to videos that I've already done on this. So I just kind of wanted to highlight some of the things that I've done. But this, I just bought the, the standard comfort kit that's set on the best comfort level that it has with the springs, and it's made a huge difference in the ride quality. It was a night and day difference in the ride quality. And again, because I review so many vehicles, I get to see a lot of better vehicles from a comfort perspective. But this suspension change has made a world of difference, and it's a great, great upgrade. But that makes this, I would say, in par, at least closer to what the Highland is, because I don't know enough about this, that suspension that's coming to talk about it, but I can tell you that this is very comfortable and the Mountain Pass fully adjustable kit is even better. Cost-wise, well, probably gonna cost you about five to 6,000, depending on where you are. The kit itself, I think, is around 2,500 US or something like that, and then you need somewhere to, to install it. So again, you can watch my video to see what the kit looks like and how I had it installed at Evolution here, but these Mountain Pass will ship uh, anywhere in North America America or in other parts and it's a KW kit from Germany so it's a high quality kit so that's one thing that you can change to bring your car closer to the Project Highland. 
Now, one of the other key features to the new Model 3 is, of course, noise reduction. So we have a more comfortable ride and noise reduction. Now, uh, some of the interim Model 3s have come out with double pane glass in the front, and now, of course, the full new Highland has double pane glass everywhere. And it will reduce the noise, and people are saying that it has. I'm seeing videos and comments, and they're seeing a big reduction in noise. So one element is the wind noise that you get through the glass and through the doors. And that not much I can do about the glass perspective because it is what it is on this car. But what you can do is buy some soundproofing or some light kits that will help to reduce the sound. There's a rubber um, type of, uh, of strips that you can put in the upper glass on the roof. And there's also some kits that will put, supply dip, a rubber um, foam here to add to reduce some of the noise within the doors and the trunk and the front. So I've done that to my vehicle. I didn't do the top glass, but I did a lot of these foam kits, these rubber kits around the doors and the trunk and the front, and to help reduce wind noise somewhat. So I think it has helped a bit. And let me tell you another area that you can do to help reduce wind noise as well. All right, a little sunshine has come out to warm you up a little bit. That's great. Now, the other area that you can reduce wind noise is in the tires. And everybody's talking about the new tires that uh, Tesla is using on the Highland, which are much nicer and much quieter. And I'm sure that they are. Now, I, I've done an episode on these tires already. These are Saloon E-Range tires. Saloon's a Chinese company, the biggest in the world from China. They've been building tires for many, many, many years. I've used them on other vehicles before. I switched over to the E-Range in the spring of this year, and I absolutely love them, folks. They've been fantastic tires for a couple of reasons. One, they're quiet, really, really quiet. I noticed a difference when I moved away from the OEM Michelin uh, Privacy tires, which were already pretty quiet, to these ones. These were even quieter, and they seem more comfortable to me. Now I'm running 18 inch OEM stocks. Obviously it's gonna be different on your vehicles if you have the 20 or 21s or whatever you're running, 19s or 20s, depending on the model. They are available for the three and the Y uh, in their range. They may even be available for the S and X. You'd have to check with Saloon and with their, their uh, distributors on what sizes are available. But I cannot stress enough that these made a huge difference in sound and noise quality. Uh, obviously, it depends on the pavement and on the road uh, uh, structure that you're running on. Some roads are louder with asphalt or concrete and grooves or no grooves and all this kind of stuff than others. But in everyday situations, these tires have been phenomenally quiet and they still maintain fantastic handling capabilities in dry and wet environments. I drove one time in when it was raining fairly hard and did an aggressive turn and the car stuck like glue, like it was on rails on the road in even with the rain. So these are fantastic tires. I can't say enough good things about them. I've had zero issues. They've been on six months now. I'm just about to do my winter changeover, but I wanted to say that if you want to, your car to be more like a Highland, you want it quieter, tires are a big component. Don't cheap out, get good tires and look at these Saloon E-Range tires. They are fantastic. And again, I've got videos, links to all the videos that I've talked about these, uh, these components on in, my, uh, in the show notes, so you can check those out for more information. Now, one of the key elements to, of course, the new Highland is the design. It's got a new front fascia, totally redesigned, and a new rear. Now, there not much you can do about that. Now, there, in saying that, though, there are front bumper and rear bumper kits that you can add to change the looks of your Model 3. I haven't done this. I'm still running the factory stuff. So that's one option though you can do if you want to change the looks of it without actually having to go buy the Highland. So there are kits that are out there. Now what I've done though is I've changed some of the light treatment. So I'm using the uh, uh, LED repeater kit for the fog lights here. So it turns it to a turn signal and it's still a fog light with multiple LEDs in it. So it gives it a little bit different look if you're looking for that look, but it's still very functional because of the, the light treatment, it's much more visible when I'm turning to, when I put my turn signals on. Now, yes, I've got decals and I've got some uh, delete stuff kits uh, for the, some of the white trim, for some of the chrome trim on here in the roof. So, and I've got a roof rack. So I have added some additional components, but when you just look at 
the bare bones highland of what the changes are. Obviously the rear bumper, the rear light treatment and the rear bumper and the front bumper and the front light treatment are totally new and they do look nice. But you, there are things that you can do aftermarket to change those if you want to that are still going to be a lot, a lot less costly than buying a new car. So just wanted to show you a couple things that I've done. Now this is what I've done on the front. Let me show you what I've done on the back. All right, so for the back, I still have the original OEM lights here, but what I've done is just augmented them by adding some additional uh, lighting kit functionality. I've got the LED strip here, which acts as it lights on at night. Also, it's acting here with my turn signals because I have my hazards running, and I've also added the LED flashing kit to the rear bumper. So instead of just being the normal reflectors, I've got some additional lights that act as turn signals that flash when you hit the brakes as well. So there's an additional safety, which is what I'm big on. So there's a safety element and there's a visibility element. Now people, there's no way they can miss that I'm turning when I put my turn signals on. So this does change the look of the vehicle though, right? It does add some enhancements to it. Some people like it, some people might think it's too much. So you be the judge, you can do one or the other or none, or, or, or then there's lots of other kits and treatments as well. There are lots of kits that change the actual tail lights to something different and add more stuff to it animations and things like that. So there's a plethora of available aftermarket options for the Model 3 and the Model Y to change it, to more personalize it, and to change the look of the, the vehicle. So uh, obviously in the highlight it's got a completely different rear um, turn signal structure that's integrated actually into the rear uh, trunk lid and uh, so the whole thing goes up with the lid and then they turn on a couple of lights at the bottom for emergency reasons. So you can kind of get that same sense with this um, and change it up to your like. So I've done this and, and it's something different but it's also added a lot of safety. So again, something else you can do to your Model 3 or Model Y. All right, so the other major modifications for the Highland is the interior. And, you know, I don't, I, I can't replicate the entire interior of that vehicle because they've done numerous changes, uh, especially even in their HVAC system on how the, the airflow has changed for the dash elements to obviously some of the use of materials that are different and the design uh, of some of those, of those angles and stuff in, within the interior are a little bit different. But there are still some things you can do to make it a little bit more nicer. And now one of the things is that you can put in a new steering wheel. So everybody's talking about the steering wheel on the new Highland. It is a very nice steering wheel, don't get me wrong. It's more like a Model S steering wheel, which is fantastic, but it does lose the stocks and that's a bit of a controversy, but probably not so much because it's like anything. Once you use it, you'll get used to it and um, it'll just be muscle memory. But what you still can do in your um, non Highland Model 3 is change the steering wheel. You can get the yoke or you can get a whole selection of different kinds of steering wheels to enhance the experience. And I have this steering wheel here from EV Annex or Evan X. Um, I got this a while ago and again, the video link to this steering wheel will be there. And this is a fantastically beautiful steering wheel. It's extremely comfortable. It's actually real carbon fiber mixed in with real leather with a nice flat bottom and excellent grips. So again, you can change the steering wheel and get a nice steering wheel to much, and there's colors, there's different colors, all kinds of things that you can do to the steering wheel to enhance it and make it your own and personalize it and make it nicer if you don't like just the stock OEM stuff. But one of the other major things that the Highlight comes with is an integrated uh, factory OEM ambient light kit. And that's something that the Model 3 kind of really should have had. Yes, it had a couple of, it had some floor lights, uh, in the front uh, for ambient lighting and that was about it really not much more um, So what I've done though and what you can do is you can go to aftermarket houses and get ambient lighting installed And if I turn it on here as this thing warms up, you will see the ambient lighting come on and Again, I'll have a video to show you this but it's a nice custom kit that uh, this shop did It's in the doors. It's in the dash now It's different than the Highland where it doesn't go towards the outside of the windscreen. It follows the lines of the dash but it does the job quite adequately. And I've, you know, I've even added some little bit to the center console. So these are things you can customize. It still has the foot wells all illuminated. It's got uh, LED lighting through the door. And this is a nice LED strip. These aren't the ones that fire 
the light beam from the ends and that tend to fade in the middle or that only have it on one end. This is a fully integrated, but it's very, very good technology. And I can use my phone with uh, the app and I can control the colors. There's multiple patterns that can have it flashing and it can have different colors for different aspects of this. There's a whole range of things that I can do to change up the colors on this if I want, just like you can on the uh, on the Highland where it's on the screen, but you can do this through your phone app. So again, there's another treatment that you can do to make your car uh, get closer to that look and feel of the Highland without actually buying the Highland. So again, you know, there's lots of interior custom designs that you can do, custom uh, elements that you can put into your vehicle if you go on all these different marketplaces that sell Tesla accessories and websites. There's tons of them. There's all kinds of things that you can do to trick it out, you know, I've got obviously a little, a little uh, um, driver's binnacle gauge, uh, just a little one that's uh, non-obtrusive so I can see the speed and turn signals, you know, uh, other things. And one of the other key elements that I do want to add on here is that have is any form of a tilt screen, like in the S and X where you have a power tilt and swivel screen or tilt screen anyway, which is really, really nice feature to have. I tell you, uh, once you have it, you really don't want to go away from it. Uh, and, but you can put that in the Model 3 and the Model Y via my friends at Atlas. You have to look for the Atlas mount specifically. Don't get the knockoff Chinese ones. They are crap. Anybody that's not selling the Atlas is selling a knockoff one. You got to go directly to these guys because it's a very high quality mount. Yes, it costs more, but the key is that he provides a strain relief for the cable, for the, the, the power or the optical cable that powers that screen. And, you know, there's a chance that if you tilt and move that screen over time, you could break that cable and then buying a new screen is about $1,500. It's an expensive repair. So I would not look at the others. I would definitely look at the Atlas one because you're getting high quality product that's going to keep it from breaking no issues. And if you watch my video, which again is going to be linked in the show notes, I show you a non-stressful way to install that, that, that uh, mount uh, without having to actually dis disconnect the optical cable from the back of the screen, which is a stressful component. So watch that video. It's something that's not in the Highland, but something you could add on and I thoroughly recommend it. Okay, and one other component that I wanted to mention was the rear display. As you know, the Highland has a uh, Tesla S-like and X-like rear display. One thing you can do is, again, aftermarket, there's lots and lots of displays that are available of different configurations. Some look exactly like the S and the X ones, and the Highland does, and some have different kinds of styles. This one has vents, which are about uh, an inch wide, inch, inch and a half wide, so I can get a good airflow without sacrificing that, yet get the connectivity that I need for rear passengers to control their own uh, uh, heat uh, on the seats and direct the air um, and turn turn the temperature up and down and actually do some infotainment type uh, stuff as well because this has a Android operating system and it has apps that you can run and you can you can connect a Bluetooth headphone to this and separately watch and listen to this while you're driving the car and not interrupting the rest of the passengers which is something I don't believe happens in the Model 3 Highland. If you play something on that rear display, it plays throughout the entire car. So if the kids want to watch a movie in the back seat and you don't want to listen to it, you have to either direct the speakers to the back and try to not listen to it or that's it, I think. But anyway, just my point is, is that there's options available as well to get the rear display feature, which again really enhances the vehicle and adds a lot of features for the rear uh, seat passengers here. So again, something that doesn't cost uh, cost a few hundred dollars depending on the models. There's lots of websites that sell these. Uh, basically, they're all made in China. So there's lots of different types to choose from and websites to choose from. But again, something that I think is a, offers a tremendous value and makes this very much like a Highland Model 3. All right, so that's basically it for this episode. Um, just trying to go through some of the things that are relevant and if you want to get a Project Highland without actually going to buy one. Look, I'm not trying to tell people not to go and switch their cars for the new Highland. It's a great vehicle. If you really feel strong enough to do that, that's your choice. But with today's economy and high interest rates, who wants to get into another 7 or 8% loan and run that for 7 or 8 years just because a new vehicle came out that's got some cool features that really should have came out for the original? Hey, if you want to do that, I'm not going to tell you how to spend your money. But for me, 
I love this car. It's been fantastic. And the upgrades that I've done make it so much like a, a Highland. It's, it's, it's pretty close without actually having the Highland. So I'm not gonna run out and spend $70,000 on a new vehicle just to get what I pretty well have. If I look at adding everything up, you know, I've got my suspension change, the LED lighting kit, the steering wheel, some of the other things I mentioned, you know, that whole thing is probably about five to $6,000 if I add that up. That's a lot cheaper than going out and spending 55, 65, $70,000, whatever the Highland's going to be. Again, uh, some people are saying the range is better because of some of the aerodynamic changes. Eh, maybe, maybe not, whatever. That's going to be up to you. The ride quality is definitely much better in the uh, in the Highland than it is today. There's no, no doubt about that. I think that's the best change that they've done. A combination of the noise, but mainly the ride quality, because that was the biggest, to me, that's the Achilles heel of the three and the Y. I don't think that the, the rides are that good in these vehicles for the class of vehicles that they're in and the money you're paying. Remember, go out and drive some competitive products and you'll see what I mean about ride. But Teslas have state-of-the-art, the best battery management and the best uh, EV experience on the market, especially with supercharging and stuff. It's extremely solid. So there are many reasons to look at Tesla. So I hope this video is helpful to getting you to think that, hey, maybe I can, you know, don't have to go out and buy a Highland, Highland but I want some of those features. And these are things that I can do, spend a, spend a few bucks and get them done. So thanks very much for watching. And if you have any comments or questions, please put them in the YouTube video as I'd love to hear from them. And until the next time, everybody stay safe and I'll see you when I see you. Take care.